So in this uh, lecture, we're going to talk about malware remediation. Uh, we talked previously about the different types of malware. Now we're going to talk about what do you do when you get them? How do you get rid of them? So when you have malware, you're going to get lots of symptoms of them. Um, all sorts of different things, and then you're not necessarily going to get all these symptoms with every piece of malware, but you will get a lot of these symptoms as you go through. Uh, if your internet browser starts accessing strange websites, you try typing in google.com and instead it takes you to some other site. Um, that could be an indication of it. Your internet connectivity starts having issues. You can't get online all the time anymore. Things kind of come and go. And you have a high latency. And what that means is, if you're used to when you type in like facebook.com, it pops up pretty much immediately because you have a fast internet connection. But now when you go to facebook.com, it starts taking a while. You're like count to one, two, three, and then it shows up. That can be an indication you have been infected with malware um, because <laughs> uh, that can be an indication you got infected with malware because what can end up happening is you're actually going through somebody else's proxy server and they're capturing your data and that can add latency. If you think about it like if you're going from here to Russia and then out to Facebook that's going to take more time than going from here straight to Facebook. Uh, security updates are failing. You're trying to update Windows security, uh, Windows updates and it keeps saying security failed, right? Or, or installation failed. The reason why is maybe you have some files that have been attacked by malware and you can't overwrite those files because they're currently being in use. You can have system files that are renamed. Uh, you can have file permissions that have been changed. You can have files that are missing because viruses have eaten up those files. Uh, your web browsing, you get all these different pop-ups. Um, my daughter, she pulled up her laptop the other day and she'd go to a website and she had seven pop-ups come up. I'm like, you've got some malware, we need to fix that. Um, you can have slow performance, you can have computer accessing strange servers. You start looking at what connections your computer is making and it's connecting to these different servers in Russia or China or Malaysia or India and you're like, uh, I don't think that's quite right. Um, or you can have large amounts of unwanted email. That could be something like you're getting a lot of spam, you're getting a lot of junk mail. Somebody's probably gotten your, your email address on one of their lists as a potential target. So the first thing you want to do is you want to quarantine the affected systems. So when we quarantine it, what we're doing is we're going to take those files using our antivirus software and put them into kind of a, a little sandbox so they don't get it out and touch the rest of the machine. You also want to quarantine the machine from the network. Uh, to do this, you're going to end up basically either unplugging it from the network or turning off the network adapter so you don't spread that virus further. Now, depending on your company's policy, you may or may not want to do this. In your home environment, definitely you want to do this because you don't want to spread it through the rest of your, the rest of your computers. Um, if you're in a company that is in the business of doing this type of stuff, sometimes they want to keep it online because the intelligence value they can gain by figuring out who's attacking you is worth more to them than that possible infection spreading. So they'll usually try to, to quarantine it off but keep it online in a, in a different way and not just unplug it from the network completely. In a home or a small business environment, it is a best practice to remove the infected workstation from the network. If it's a wired network, unplug the network cord. If it's a wireless network, turn off the wireless, uh, wireless receiver. Um, this will quarantine the, the computer and the files from spreading throughout the network. You'll then quarantine it using your antivirus software and you'll be able to rem remediate the issue before returning it back to work. Um, this will allow you to go through and clean up those virus files. We'll talk about that as we move through here. So remediating the system. Before you remove the malware, you first have to disable your system restore. So the first thing you want to do is go into your system protection settings, turn off system protection, as you can see here in the upper right corner, and then hit apply in the bottom right corner. Once you've done that, you'll be able to run your full virus scan. And at that point, you're going to be able to start cleaning up this virus, okay? Um, sometimes you can't get a full virus scan to uncover all the malware. And if this occurs, you're going to have to restore from a backup from an earlier time before you had the virus, if you know when that was. For instance, if you're like, hey, two weeks ago, everything worked fine. But today, I got a bunch of stuff, and your last backup was from two weeks ago, revert back to two weeks ago. You'll lose some data, but you'll bring your system back in a timely manner. Um, and you can revert back to that time. From a system restore perspective, it'll restore your system files back to that time as well. Also, the next thing you want to do is verify that your antivirus software is up to date. Um, regardless of how you've remediated the system, you always want to make sure you have a good antivirus uh, system installed and it's updated. Because if you have an antivirus system that you installed three weeks ago and you haven't updated the definitions for three weeks, new viruses appear all the time. Usually there's daily updates to your antivirus software of those definition files once or twice a day. So you want to ensure that it's always configured for automatic scanning and always configured for automatic updates. Once you do this, you can then re-enable, once you've done a full scan and verify your system's complete with new definitions, you can then re-enable the system restore feature in your operating system and create that new restore point. And again, you want to give it a name like 
after virus cleanup or something like that. So you'll remember in six months, that was a good time instead of that was a bad time. Uh, the other thing I always recommend is go back and delete those old system restore points that had the virus in them. Because you don't want to restore at some point in six months from now and bring that virus right back. So now you're going to go back and enable your system restore. You can right click on my computer and select properties. Click on the system protection on the left menu bar, uh, as you'll see up there. Uh, you'll click on the system protection tab and then you'll create the restore point manually using the create button at the bottom of the dialog box. The next thing you want to do as a technician is you want to educate your users, right? So you want to make sure if you fixed all these problems that this problem isn't going to come back next week. And that's telling your users to make sure that any virus or any malware is updated. Making sure that the systems are being scanned for malware. Educating them on the different types of malware and the techniques that are used by attackers. Um, scanning removable media for malware. Disabling the auto run feature, so again that baiting technique won't work against them. Configuring any malware scans for automatic operations. Don't rely on your users to have to run these scans. Let the system do it itself. Um, tell the users how they should respond to a malware threat in the future. Right? Should they try to power through it or should they immediately call the help desk? Uh, quarantine suspected files. Teach the users how to do that. And teach them about any phishing education because I will tell you the number one way that we get in with viruses nowadays um, at least as an attacker when we're trying to get into your systems is we use phishing and the reason why we do that is it works um, it really does and so people think I'll never fall for that but people fall for it all the time those phishing emails where you click that link to go to Bank of America and then you know thinking it's your website and it wasn't um, those things are things that we get in all the time so it works it's very effective and so you got to train your users against this the number one thing in cybersecurity that is our big vulnerability right now is our users, okay? Because you got to think, every computer is on the network, and you can have all the best firewalls in place. You can have all the best antivirus in place. But if your user clicks that link and opens the doorway for the attacker to get in, there's nothing that your technical solutions are going to stop it, okay? you got to train your users as well. So, which of the following should a technician do last after cleaning up a virus infection? You guys should get this one, right? Enable system restoring, create a restore point. Update the antivirus software, schedule scans and updates, or educate the end user. What do you guys think? Educate the end user. Correct. Because again, your user is the weakest link in cybersecurity, so you really got to focus on training that user up.